Now let's talk about how consumers can read with one each other in a group. And this is called a consumer group. So when you're creating an application, it is very common to scale the number of consumers you have so that they're all consuming in parallel from the same topic. And so they can share the reads and read from exclusive partitions. And to do so, we need to have these consumers to be part of a consumer group. Now, if you have more consumers than partitions, then some consumers will be inactive. So I just want to show you a visual representation of how to consume a topic with three partitions with different consumer groups. So let's say we create a consumer group called Consumer Group Application 1, and that could be whatever application you want that is reading from a Kafka topic. And we're going to create two consumers as part of that Consumer Group Application 1. So in this case, these two consumers have to share the reading from the three topic partitions in Apache Kafka. So consumer number one can be reading from partition zero and one, and consumer number two can be reading from partition two. As you can see in this example, they are all reading from exclusive partitions and they are sharing the work. Now you don't have to program this. Kafka consumers are made to do this on their own in a very, very smart way. Now, if you have a second type of consumer group application, okay, called consumer group application two with three consumers, then in this case, we have as many consumers as partitions. And so therefore, each consumer is going to be reading from one distinct partition. And if you have a consumer group with number three, but with only one consumer, well, that consumer is alone and we have to read all the partitions. So that consumer is going to be reading all the partitions. So as we can see here, the consumers are going to be sharing the reading of the partition data from within a consumer group, okay? But for two consumer groups that are not named the same way, then there's obviously going to be the topic data being read multiple times. So what you should know is that a consumer group will consume the data of a topic partition once, but a topic partition can be consumed by many different consumer groups at the same time. And this is again, normal for a pub sub system. So what if you have too many consumers in your consumer group? Well, if you have too many consumers, some consumers will just be inactive. So in this example, we have four consumers and more than three partitions. So the fourth consumer is just going to be inactive because there is no partition to read from. Fairly easy, right? But if one of your consumer goes down, then we have a consumer ready to retrieve the data and start the work again. So now when consumers start reading in a group, we need to introduce the concept of consumer offsets. So Kafka is going to be where the consumer groups is going to store how far it has been reading. And how far it has been reading is called the consumer offsets. So these committed offsets are going to live in a Kafka topic and it's an internal Kafka topic. So it's going to start with two underscores and that Kafka topic is named underscore underscore consumer offsets. So when a consumer in a consumer group has processed data that it has received from Kafka, it's going to be committing the offsets. The idea is that when you commit the offsets, you're going to write to the topic named consumer offsets. And so if it happens that in the future, this consumer dies, then any consumer that starts again, or if that one consumer restarts, will be able to read from the exactly or approximately where it has been dying from thanks to the last committed consumer offsets. So let's take an example. We have this topic partition and we've been reading, uh, writing a lot of data. So we are at 4,258 number of offsets. And we have a consumer from a consumer group reading from that topic partition. Then when we start reading, we're going to read from the latest committed offsets. So in this case, this is the vertical blue bar and the reads are going to happen right after these committed offsets. So there are different strategies for committing offsets. The, there are about three delivery semantics for consumers. So the first one is called at most once. And this is when you commit offsets as soon as the message is going to be received. So in that case, if you are processing the messages after committing the offsets, and the processing goes wrong or your consumer crashes, the messages will be lost and they won't be read again because you have already committed the offsets. And when you commit offsets in Kafka, you're letting Kafka know that I have processed the messages and I don't want to see them again for that consumer group. There's also at least once, which is usually the preferred method. In this case, we want to commit the offsets after a message has been processed. But if again, your consumer crashes or the processing goes wrong, 
and your consumer restarts, then the message will be read again. And so there is a chance to process a message twice. It's called duplicate processing of messages. And so to avoid the effects of this, you need to make sure that whatever you're doing with your message is idempotent. That means that if you process the same message twice, the second effect is not going to have any more effect than already the first one being processed. So for example, sending an email is not idempotent because if you read it two messages twice and you said two emails, then it's going to be obviously having one more email, a duplicate email being sent, all right? But if you are, for example, uh, inserting data into a database, but making sure beforehand that the data has not been inserted, if you read the same message twice, then the second time you will realize the message has already been inserted and therefore you should not insert it a second time. So this is called idempotent processing. And so obviously everyone wants exactly once, so in between at most once and at least once. And this can only be achieved for Kafka to Kafka workflows using a API, for example, that has exactly once processing. And one of them is the Kafka Streams API. This is why it's a very popular stream processing library. And if you want exactly once for having from data from Kafka to an external system, you need to use an idempotent con consumer to ensure that if you read the same data twice, then it's not going to have any effect on the external system and therefore having exactly once. Okay, so one last word on consumer groups and conductor. So in conductor, you are able to see all your consumer groups and they're going to say how many of them are active, empty, rebalancing, and dead. And when you click on a specific consumer group, you're going to be able to see uh, which consumers are reading, from which topic, and if there's a lag, meaning if the consumer group is not reading fast enough from your topic. Also, you are going to be able in Conductor to reset a consumer group. That means that if you want to start reading from a topic from the start again or from a very specific point for a specific consumer group, then it is going to be possible to reset the offsets of the consumer group from a dialogue directly from Conductor. So when we start a consumer in Conductor though, as we've seen, the consumer cannot be part of a consumer group. Otherwise our users could do some very bad mistakes. So all the consumers in, consumer, uh, in Conductor are consuming topics independently and they don't commit offsets and you will not see them in the consumer groups window. So Conductor can only help here to manage and reset consumer groups, which is something you will have to do at some point. And it is very helpful to have a dialogue and a graphical UI to do so. So I will see you in the next lecture to practice using consumer groups in Conductor.